Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to go to Assistant Secretary Jacobson with a question because administration negotiators stated that that they did not seek human rights concessions in exchange for taking steps towards normalization. And now, you know our concern about the State Department and you not being included in this uh, on the front end, uh, being kept in the dark on it. But um, the, the reality is that pro-democracy and, and human rights um, activists in Cuba have lamented that human rights weren't integral to these secret negotiations. In fact, the lead Cuban government negotiator, uh, who would be now your, your counterpart, he said, change in Cuba is not negotiable. We have no, you know, indication here uh, that the, the Cuban government uh, intends to give ground. And so if the, re if the regime refuses to ease its repression on the people in Cuba, how do our concessions advance the interests of the Cuban people? Let me be clear, Mr. Chairman, on, on part of this. I think it's crucial to understand that there really were no concessions from the Obama administration. Moving forward with the establishment of diplomatic relations is not a gift or a concession to governments. It's a channel of communication. As you know, having embassies in countries is often not seen by governments as a gift. Quite the contrary. We're, we're quite irritating to governments sometimes. Um, and in fact, it's not necessarily something that the Cuban government wanted. Um, but we think it's the things that were announced on December 17th are a much more effective way to pursue our own national interest. So we believe that um, we can more effectively pursue the human rights policies, the democracy policies that we want in empowering the Cuban people and in having that direct channel with the Cuban government to convey those concerns and to work with allies around the hemisphere who no longer fear association with a policy they did not support well, because well, of but, this policy. But if I could just point out what you're leaving out of the equation here is the fact that under these initiatives that, that the White House took, without the State Department, but the White House took, the White House is now increasing the amount of dollars that flows into yeah. Cuba, specifically that flows into the regime and helps the regime's bottom line at a time when the re regime, as you could have told the White House, uh, is now now faces being cut off in terms of the subsidy from Venezuela. So at the very time that you would think we would exert leverage, you have a situation instead where you've got sort of a lifeline. I mean, that's, that's my concern. Let me go to um, another question I had, and that is um, last week, Raul Castro stated that normalizing bilateral relations with the U.S. would not be possible until the U.S. returns the naval station at Guantanamo Bay to Cuba. Is the administration considering transferring this mil military asset back to the Cuban people? And I'm, I'll remind you, when, uh, when we talked with the State Department before on, on negotiations on another subject, the State Department spokesman said, unequivocally that the United States is not considering the release of any member of the Cuban Five, um, one of whom was convicted for his part in killing four Americans, uh, for Alan Gross. So we've, we've got a little history of, of hearing one thing and then finding out another after the fact. But on this question uh, on Guantanamo, if you could... Uh, sure. Um the issue of Guantanamo is not on the table in these conversations. I want to be clear that what we're talking about right now is the reestablishment of diplomatic relations, which is only one first step in normalization. Obviously, the Cuban government has raised Guantanamo. We are not interested in discussing that. We are not discussing that issue or return of Guantanamo. Um, we also, I want to be clear, you know, we didn't return the Cuban agents for Mr. Gross. 
we returned the Cuban agents for a, an intelligence agent that we wanted. Let, let, me, let me ask you one last question. For years, the Castro regime has perceived broadcasting by our Office of Cuba Broadcasting as a threat. Last week, the Cuban government referred to these as illegal, and Castro has demanded that the broadcast be stopped. To what extent have our broadcasts been discussed as part of these talks? The Cuban government has always raised uh, radio and TV Marti, both in migration talks, um, and uh, they raise them again as part of a list of things that they object to in the normalization talks. Um, but we have no plans to end those either. Well, I know that, that Cuba is demanding that they be shut down. I'm, I'm hoping to hear you say that we're demanding that Cuba drop its jamming. <laughs> but uh, thank you. I'm going to go to Mr. Engel because my, my time is, is up. Thank you.